to greet everyone. Good evening and good afternoon for uh, some parts of uh, this big European and Middle East and Eurasian region. <laughs> Huge uh, time zones we are covering. We are very, very happy to uh, be all together this, uh, this time. And we are also very happy to welcome Dr. Iris Dotan Katz. She's from Israel. She's a wonderful person. She has been dedicating all her efforts, her life. She has had a, a very interesting, exciting life, which have showed her that um, peace is the only solution for uh, the well-being of uh, the world and uh, the individual and the families. So uh, we would like to hear her story and hear her ways of uh, uh, how she she has come to this um, to this conclusion for her life and how she's doing now the floor is yours mrs K dr katz <laughs> thank you zoe so thank you for inviting me uh, really to share my story and uh, you, thank you for coming, uh, all of you. And I only want to mention that I'm very, very grateful to Women Federation for World Peace, that I feel that uh, this organization embraced me almost 10 years now, and especially you, Zoe supporting me and uh, believing in me. I'm also grateful for the beautiful group of Sisters of Peace, especially from the Middle East that I've met uh, during the years uh, that are accepting me in spite of controversial political issues. Um, only to mention that today, I think it is a symbol, uh, it is symbolically for me to say because this is the day of peace, yes, Zoe? Yes, today. And uh, which is very important to all of us. And also we are very close to the Equality Day, which will be on Saturday, uh, this coming Saturday. So I thought maybe we can uh, be in um, having a moment of silence praying for peace in this very day. Thank you. So I will begin with kind of an history of my life. Uh, I was born in Tel Aviv, uh, also my in Israel. Also, my parents were born in Tel Aviv uh, under the British mandate. And that time, uh, Tel Aviv was part of Palestine, Palestina, it was used to be called. My grandparents were born in Jerusalem and my ancestors arrived from Yemen under the Ottoman Empire in the 19th century. My ancestor came to here to the, to the Holy Land. They were not Zionists. They didn't come out of Zionism, but they came in order to live in the land of the Bible side by side with whoever lived here without any difference, which is very what well, used to be very important for me all my life. Uh, in a way, I, sometimes I feel like I'm kind of Palestinian. My parents were born in Palestine and I have uh, Arabic uh, roots. Uh, even though I'm Jewish in rel by religion, even though practicing now Buddhism, and I, I am kind of Israeli by nation, but I must say that many, always I felt a little bit different from 
like for example, Ashkenazi population of Israelis or those who came from Europe, many of them Holocaust survivors or others who came here after State of Israel was established. I always lived in between wars and bloodshed since I was born. Uh, one of the wars in 1967, as one of us or most of us know, uh, brought us the occupation. Occupation that I, I believe changed my, all, of, uh, all our lives. Even though not everybody thinks like that in Israel. I always was looking for a way to understand and find different ways of coping with the occupation and the conflict between Israel and Palestine, or between Israelis and Palestinians, which is not this, exactly the same. That is why I made my research that was my, happened to be my PhD, finally, about peacemaking uh, under the topic of principles and practices of peacemaking as they are applied by socially engaged Buddhist peace movements. So I was looking for, for, for understanding, for principles, for practices, not in the regular fields or platforms of psychology or social psychology or others, but in the field of spirituality which I found in, in, in Buddhism. I understood that I cannot solve the conflict or the occupation, occupation against which we were so much, we were against which we, we were so much. I understood that this is a job of, for our governments to do, even though they are not doing enough. But maybe we might do something for the being, for the beginning, at least beginning of peace building contributing our part to kind of creating the puzzle of infrastructure of, for peace from the beginning, from, the, from bottom up, out of not knowing, not understanding, but still doing something from people to people. And I believe that I do, and I do believe now, and I will. I think I will live for, for, forever in building bridges of trust, especially by doing our best, at least for fighting, for fighting for Palestinians, for fighting, even we cannot stop the occupation with our power, with our skills, with our um, abilities, but at least fighting for social or legal or economic justice, justice for Palestinians in Israel and in the occupied territories, because we have also Palestinians, of course, in, in, in Israel. We, when I was a child, we used, to, I was taught to call them Israeli Arabs. <laughs> now it, it sounds very, very strange and kind of ridiculous. But okay, I, I've I've done my own education on that. I got some experience um, following my PhD and following the the groups of of peacemaking in the world. I got some experience when I was working and studying in Savodia, Sri Lanka. This is a peace uh, a, a peace people movement in Sri Lanka, which have under it fifteen thousand um, villages. I was practiced also by being involved in Zen peacemakers retreat in conflict and genocide zones like Bosnia, Rwanda, Sri Lanka, Native Americans, and especially in Auschwitz. Uh, we practice there in Auschwitz as a place of, of horror in which people were punished and murdered because they were different and others. And um, we, we felt that the place, that the, 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 the soil of, of Auschwitz is, can teach us something. Uh, we practiced there to bear witness to the perpetrator and, and, and victim that all of us have in ourselves. And for me, it was very important living in Israel and um, having the history of Holocaust here, you know, collective trauma or whatsoever, but still 
in my opinion, being perpetrated to others, perpetrated to the to the to the to the Palestinians, and uh, also we practice very very deeply. Um, we 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 are exploring very deeply how we are really behaving to to other people who are not like ourselves. Um, all of those in with international groups, including Palestinians, Germans, Polish, sometimes um, children and and uh, grandchildren of Nazis, uh, under underground um, um, war, um, warriors, and also of course children and and. Um, and grandchildren of uh, of survivors. Uh, there, I learned the importance of not splinting and not separating. And here come comes my my vow for peace work. It was during my first Auschwitz retreat. I met there Ihab. Ihab is a Palestinian friend whom I didn't know before. I came to the retreat for the first time, trying to be in the not knowing, uh, which is kind of practicing in Auschwitz, letting go my knowledge and my ideas about Auschwitz, about the Holocaust, which is not very easy and simple for a Jewish Israeli woman. Um, it's not very easy to empty my mind uh, uh, of so many years of memorial ceremonies, fears, and narrative about the Holocaust. I tried just to be there and see what Auschwitz can teach me. And um, it helped, and I I knew I knew I knew nobody there except Tani, my partner, who came with me, and 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 I met. And I didn't know even Ihab because, because I didn't know him, but the minute that we met each other, it was like we are so very close. We, we, we were being so close and similar in our opinions and behaviors in our backgrounds. Um, like for example, you know, we were this, we had this um behavior of Middle East, like sometimes asking people if we can take their schnitzel because there was not enough for us or something like that. Because, you know, we were like, like doing our stuff together. Like we've always, always been together. It was very strange because we didn't eat, know each other. Um, um, but we felt that we are similar in our background. We felt like cousins. We felt we, we, we shared kind of, a similar yet different history knew the same places of childhood, speaking the same language. We had the same jokes, but be, since Ihab uh, was from from Jaffa, so um, I was a Jewish Israeli and he was Palestinian Israeli, kind of. Uh, we were kind of equal in the camp only having different religions, which made our interactions even more interesting and precious, uh, telling each other some of our experience, of our holidays, our way of life and such. But, um, but um, also being in, in, in uh, uh, living in Jaffa, uh, Ihab told me about his history, history of his, his family that left Jaffa to, to Gaza uh, in the in the uh, 48 war, and then his father came back to Jaffa, and he then his parents and in, uh, Ihab himself was born in, in Jaffa. And I knew that my parents were born in Tel Aviv. And I don't know if you know, um uh, Tel Aviv and Jaffa, it's kind of contested city. We call it Tel Aviv Jaffa. Uh, and combining all Jaffa and other parts of Jaffa and uh, other parts of the city of Tel Aviv. Um, but I, I understood that some, something will be different because still, Ihab is Palestinian and I'm Israeli. And even though he's living in Jaffa and there is 
a difference and there is kind of in, inequality uh, in 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 a, um that was for me strike strike me very strongly so at the last day uh, i had the insight of the action to be taken by me arose in me so very very clearly uh, i felt and i knew that i have to do something about the injustice in my society uh, that ihab was kind of the symbol of this injustice and it it has brought me to the decision to give my share in making Palestinians and Israeli a little bit, at least a little bit more equal, bring, bringing them together, uh, bringing them closer, having them experiencing the same recognition, the same recognition, the same respect, the same rights and dignity as human beings. And then I declared at night, at the last night in front of the whole retreat that I will do my best to make our life's conditions a little more equal as much as I can. And it was my vow, it was my vow in front of everybody that became my path of life there in Auschwitz. It was, I think, 15 years ago. So uh, coming back to Israel, I began with a small program. Uh, of presenting again and again in many, 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 many places in Israel uh, uh, to groups of Israelis all over the country a, docu a documentary about the bereaved families from both sides who lost their beloved ones in the conflict. Uh, it, the, this uh, docu documentary is called Encounter Point. Very, very strong one. And um, and uh, it, it shows so much how much pain uh, both of sides are having, losing their beloved ones, and how much the pain, it is, it is cynic to say how much the pain is so very similar and in vain. Uh, and I did it with my Palestinian friend Ali Abu Awad, is from um, Bet Omar. Uh, we became very close friends. Uh, Ali invited me many times to Omar. Now he lives in uh, Gush Etzion, which there he has, it is in, in kind of, in, in the occupied territory, but very close to Israel. And he has there his um, movement by the name of Roots, trying, to bring together settlers, Jewish settlers in the occupied occupation, uh, occupied territories and Palestinians living together, for the time being sharing the, the land together. This this is um, the, having holiday the holidays together and such. Uh, Ali uh, uh, invited me in one of the time that Ali invited me. He, ha he had his little girl by, by the name of Sarah. And he asked Sarah, uh, do you like Jewish people? Or she said, no. And he asked, but do you like Iris? So she said, yes. So do you know that Iris is Jewish? Oh, no. <laughs> so this shows us how, how we are really how it is important, so important to, to be meeting uh, together, especially to let our children be meeting together. And that is what we are we are doing a lot now. So this was uh, this uh, screening of the of the of the presenting the this documentary was the beginning. Uh, this was the beginning of cooperation with Ali Abu Awad. And since then, I built a network of Israeli and Palestinians. Palestinian activist. I must say, when you start something like that in a small place like here, uh, people are finding you. People began to bring me ideas and suggestions for for joint projects, and it began to 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 to, to flow and to 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 get more and more. 
um, um, I knew the most important thing that I knew because I was by myself and or with Ali Abu Awad, that the most important thing was to have partners. Um, the, um, Arya Ratne, who established Savodia in Sri Lanka, um, in which I was like 22, 22 times again and again, uh, we, we were there working, uh, volunteering and learning. He told me, um, you, because he, he began his, 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 um, his big uh, movement, as I said, 15,000 uh, villages with one village. And always he used to tell me, you have to, to have partners, no, no matter who, no matter from where, Palestinian, Israeli, you can have one, you have two, and then it will grow. And that what, that's what happened. Uh, then the first time that we had an organization, we have had established a Palestinian-Israeli movement by the name of Leading the Leaders for Peace. We were naive. Uh, we, we, we were <laughs> sending letters to the leaders to uh, uh, Mahmoud Abbas and uh, Bibi Netanyahu and um, and mainly what we were, we, we were doing we initiated peace walks we had Bethlehem walk we had other peace walks in, in, in Tel Aviv uh, bringing Palestinians from the occupied territories and uh, and um, and we began to add more and more Palestinians, even from Gaza, we got permits for them. Ramallah and Bethlehem coming here to Israel. We began to meet as friends, inviting Palestinian friends and their families for Shabbat dinners, spending weekends with us. Many times we began from small scale, small groups, small ideas. Many times we planned one thing and found ourselves with something else that was born out of the conditions, out of the situation and the reality as they are. The main principle was that we are not two parties. We are not two sides. We are us, we are we. We are one big community which we refuse to split and we reject the idea that we are other from each other. Uh, and again, my mentor those days was Arya Ratne, the leader of Savodia. Um, we knew that we are building, we, we believed, I believe still now, that we are building the infrastructure for coexisting of two people and also coexisting of different inner groups in each people. Um, that is why many times those days I was trying to get closer to extremist, rightist groups in Israel in order to know them, in order to find the way for them to listen to me, uh, in finding the way for inner peace and understanding in Israel in order later on to, to, to convince uh, people with different opinions, to lead these groups to, to from there maybe to outer peace as I believed. Um, it was very important for me that People, to lead people to understand and accept the needs, the narratives, the stories, the justice of the Palestinians. Uh, I know that without inner peace, we will never be able to build and sustain peace with outer peace and with Palestinians. And we need more, more in people in our side. And, and maybe even coming maybe even coming to to support stopping the occupation I, th I, th I think i was naive at that time but still i believe i must tell now anyway i must say uh it is much more difficult uh to be in contact or leading or convincing or whatsoever people from the from the right uh, wing people who are rightist in israel orthodox people um, because we are in time of deep disagreement in Israel, uh, maybe part of you know it, uh, we have deep dispute, struggle, strife here in Israel. We are uh, having demonstrations against uh, the government every Saturday and more. Um, uh, it is difficult, even impossible to accept and understand and listen to 
to the other side in our society. For me, trying to be more open I, to other side in the in the Israeli society, it is very dif difficult now. Uh, so, especially referring to the occupation that brought us, in my opinion, to this political situation in in Israel. Anyway, for me, much more important now uh, uh, is uh, continuing building the infrastructure for the future in getting closer to our partners in Palestine in the present. So getting closer means that we have to be meeting as much as we can, meeting, meeting, meeting. When we have joint programs of women leadership, for example, and we have or traveling to the beaches with mother and child, mothers and children, we are getting to know each other, acknowledging the similarities. So, so many things are, you know, similar between us. And, and for me, these are the roots of the mutual trust, like Sarah, my, my friend, my friend Ali's daughter. Uh, we have, um, um, a not far away village, uh, Dir Istia, a Palestinian village. Um, from my house uh, to this village, which is in the occupied territory, territory in the West Bank, um, it is kind of half an hour and you are in another world. And um, we initiated there under the 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 influence and inspiration of Sarvodia, this um, movement in Sri Lanka, we initiated a project of home gardening uh, based on my experience in Sarvodia in Sri Lanka. I used to work there with the women for women movement, women movement and studied a lot. And um, and uh, we had, um, it was like uh, women, um, growing um, vegetables for their families and also uh, for selling them in Ramallah and other cities uh, in the in the West, in Nablus and other cities in the West Bank. Uh, it was amazing um, and beautiful. I did it with Naima, but unfortunately Naima uh, later died of cancer. Naima was a very um, bitter woman. She was amazing and very smart, but she got, she was, her brother was killed by the Israeli army. And uh, she was of course against the occupation and she studied in, a, I think in, in Saudi Arabia or something like that to be a social worker. Um, but since she was Fatah uh, member, when she came to for, to visit um, in her, her home, uh, Israel didn't let her go back to finish her studies because she was a member in the Fatah. Anyway, she died of cancer. She left uh, an amazing husband, Zohir, and two children. We supported the children in their studies. Both of them, uh, their daughter is stu studied um, is is studying um, medicine. Uh, I think in Jerusalem uh, or Nablus, I don't remember. And her son is studying uh, studied already computer stuff. And um, I must tell you that before Naima died, I asked her to forgive me and my country for not protecting her and for for the occupation. Uh, we cried together. Uh, when I, yeah, yeah, it was very, very sad. I must say that after I apologized, uh, I tried to, to hug her. She pushed me. Usually she was very close to me, but this apology of mine brought her to her bitter and painful suffering. And it was very, 
difficult for both of us. Anyway, um, then um, in order to support Zohir, we brought people from left and right to workshops with Zohir, her husband, a workshop of Palestinian cooking. And uh, it was amazing. And we were cooking and dining together after preparing our food. Uh, and we brought her people who knew nothing about occupation, who didn't, they were, they even didn't think about occupation, didn't even think about being there, understanding what's going on, they're like blind people. And then it was an opportunity for people to see a, a, a village, a village that exists for hundreds of years under occupation. Unbelievable. And people could understand something about what's going on by this um, cooking, um, Palestinian cooking workshop. Uh, also, we used to come to the village in order to help by our hands working. And uh, like, for example, we came for a few days in order to clean and renovate uh, old uh, beautiful buildings uh, in the old neighborhood of Dear Istia. Um, that was that was in order to build community centers and touristic in, in, initiative in these uh, old buildings. We also came to protect, uh, to be there with them against uh, Israeli soldiers. They have this um, uh, place where they have their orchards and place for their sheep and such that um, settlers uh were using for themselves and um we came there to to help them in um with the olives and also to protect them against uh settlers um so this is about dear istia then there is uh my friend hafez uh from gaza who sent me flowers on every friday Every Friday, between 11 to 12, I get flowers in my WhatsApp from Hafez, years. And one Friday, I didn't get uh, flowers. And of course, I said, okay, this is because Israel is doing whatever Israel is doing to, to Gaza. He stopped. Now we understand that I'm Israeli. No flowers anymore. And... Uh, I decided on Saturday, the day after, to send him a WhatsApp, asking him if he's okay. Not why didn't you send me flowers? You know, a woman cannot ask a man why didn't you send me flowers. So only how are you? He said, "Oh, Iris, you don't know. My uncle died yesterday, so I didn't send you flowers." And of course, I send him flowers back. And um, but only when he begins, when he, he he has to do it first. But with Hafez, who is psychiatric social worker from Gaza, we initiated a Palestinian Israeli amazing conference about nonviolent resistance to the occupation. We did it by Psychoactive, an organization that I belong to, of Palestinian and Israeli psychologists. Together, we arranged quite a big and interesting uh, conference in Tel Aviv. We brought people from Gaza and West Bank, uh, bring uh, mental health professionals and 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 um, and um, and um, and psycholo psychologists and other mental health professionals from uh, Gaza and West Bank, and um, one of them. He brought his wife, and the day before the uh, pre-conference day, um, 50 people of them, we had a lot, we had like almost 300, but 50 uh, were gathered in my house and having like kind of clo closer discussion, uh, Palestinians and Israelis, and one of them brought his wife, and his wife 
uh, invited a brother from Haifa in, in, in north of Israel, kind of north of Israel. And they spent a few hours in my, in my downstairs in my clinic uh, being together. This woman in her, and their brother that she didn't see for years. So it was an opportunity for them to be meeting. So this was that, and they were, of course, they were sleeping in our houses during the conference, and uh, where we were cooking and eating together. It was amazing. And out of that, we established an ongoing group of psychologists and mental health professionals working on coping with trauma from both sides. I must tell you, this is very, very interesting um, relationship because you know when there are bombs or when um israeli air force attacking gaza i can call by whatsapp the magic whatsapp i can call hafiz and you know there are bombs and i'm talking with hafiz asking him how are you and what's about the ta -ta -ta, EU situation and such never mind that the bombs are not in his in his um but there is something in his area but in his neighborhood but just imagine such situation that I can speak with kind of the enemy we, we, who is attacked by my country. So this is, this is the meaning of relationship. It is, wow. Uh, following, uh, following that, I because it was about uh, this issue of mental health, I I joined um, a, another organization, and I'm close to finish, by the name of Project Rosanna. And this is an international orga organization which has a branch in Israel. Our mission in this um, organization, organization is to improve health outcomes for all people in our region, in Palestine as well as in Israel, rooted in the belief that by working together across borders and cultures, we can make a real dif difference. This is the this is the vision. Uh, we are leading platforms. Um, we have we have money. We get money from the international organization and also other USAID and other uh, organizations. So we are leading platforms very serious platforms for expertise and specialization for Palestinian doctors from hospitals in the West Bank in, in hospitals in Jerusalem um, in, in Israel. Uh, we are also running courses for Palestinian and Israeli nurses. They are studying together as part of kind of a journey of understanding and building connections and contacts. By spending time together and a long uh, kind, kind of period of time, these nurses really, in my opinion, becoming kind of change agents for peace in their surroundings and societies in Israel and in Palestine. Because, you know, they are telling about like a Palestinian one will nurse telling our, her friends about Israel and about Israeli nurses and how people are nice da, 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 and vice versa. And this is really amazing. Uh, we are doing the same with a group of psychologists from Israel, Gaza and West Bank. So I personally have supervisees in, from Gaza teaching by Zoom in, 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 in giving a, a supervision, individual supervision to, to, to psychologists from Gaza. It's amazing. And by the way, recently we began to run Arabic courses for Israeli nurses because we thought that it is more dignified for the Arabic speakers here in Israel that, uh, and it is respecting them if the nurses can understand and speak Arabic. And um, and only to mention that my son, Daniel, uh, as I see him as my follower, has a school by the name of Madrase, which brings online platform of learning Arabic for free, because it is very important in, in his opinion, under the vision of learning to communicate. 
and uh, is having now hundreds of thousands of students learning Arabic, which is very important here in Israel. Um, sometimes there is a kind of interchange of Ramadan, Passover and Easter, reminding us all of the ongoing dialogue and exchange that we like to say between this we as Abrahamic traditions and this enables us, our diverse team and partners to come together and share uh, individual customs. Uh, the last thing that I would like to mention about uh, Project Rosanna, that also we have um, a very beautiful activity of health and other activity of, of health. And it is that we are dealing with driving uh, by, by volunteers. And we have a very, very big group of volunteers, very big group of volunteers, driving sick Palestinians like having cancer or some other things uh, that need treatments in Israel, uh, driving them to the hospitals in, in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem and such from Gaza, from West Bank. They are taking them from the checkpoints to the hospitals, getting their uh, treatments or whatsoever they need and taking uh, driving them back. Um, including their family members. So that's for now. And um, thank you for listening and being. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, this so sincere and deep explanation of your life and of your course to uh, recognize your identity, the identity of your neighbors, and in general, the importance of uh, living in peace. Yeah, I want to open the floor to any questions. Um, I don't have a question myself, but I have a, a comment that it is admirable how even uh, growing totally 100% uh, in, uh, in in an Israeli environment, you came to recognize that uh, uh, in spite of all of, of people around you uh, believing that there is a separation and there has to be a, an overpowering in order to survive from the side of Israel, your motion, and I'm sure some selected people, uh, is to uh, that you can live properly only in in cooperation and in to, together this is uh, i find it uh, admirable hmm. yeah yeah marsha only only i see here in the a question about uh, about uh, the the commentary uh, and counterpoint yes i think it is in on the youtube but if not <clears throat> refer to me, but you you can find it in counterpoint. Yes, the commentary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, can I can I speak? Yes. <laughs> okay. So uh, first of all, I I would like to thank you for your beautiful, sincere, concrete uh, testimony. Um, I would like to praise you for your effort in coming together with those who are uh, enemies of your country and um, in a sense uh, I can see that what you have done all throughout your life or, or some period of your life and are doing now is very much in line with uh, what we uh, would like to do in the Women's Federation. And um, uh, each of us uh, lives in different country, in a different country. And so uh, we have experiences of coming together with the other. And we think it's a wonderful and necessary way to create peace. I would say that examples like uh, yourself are uh, the ones that prevent the world going down the toilet somehow mm -hmm. because uh, you are 
in a realistic way, keeping peace, keeping peace and uh, helping people not to 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 get uh, uh, despaired, in despair, desperate, desperate, sorry. And so thank you so much for this beautiful testimony. Um, I, when I was in Israel in 2004, 2005, uh, I was able to uh, visit two projects. Uh, I cannot remember their names. One was a hospital that maybe you know, that treats people from both sides, from Israel and Palestinian and Palestine, and uh, and the other was a school that educates children from both sides. And so I can see this uh, example proliferating, multiplying. I think it's so important. That's what we need to do in our areas. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Please unmute yourselves and ask your question. I think I can see almost anyone, everyone, but if you uh, raise the hand in the reactions, I can see better because I have two. Yeah, I think Mirabel is raising her hand. It's in the second screen of mine. Yes, Mirabel. Yeah, I want perhaps, to say. Perhaps, uh, I'm sorry. Perhaps when we um, take the floor and we want to ask a question, we can say the name, we can see them, but uh, our nationalities. Marcia, she's from Spain. I think it, it is some, uh, somehow it gives the color of our background. Uh, sorry, sorry. Mirabel. Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Mirabel Corlet. I am from Malta. I also am a member of the Women's Federation for World Peace in Malta. Yeah, I want to uh, express how, how appropriate I think um, the whole uh, talk of, of her story by Dr. Iris, um, considering today is the day of peace, United Nations Day of Peace worldwide. Although uh, as, a, as a rule, usually all the wars going on should have stopped for one day, but today they didn't. That shows how far away from, from a peaceful world we still are. And I think, you know, it is the purpose of uh, the, every woman, every woman, even more so every mother, our mission should be to work for peace. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Indeed. Mm. Yes. Any other? We don't have much time. Oh, there's Patricia. If you want to unmute yourself. Yeah. Yeah, good evening. Thank you so much, Dr. Iris. I was so moved by your testimony. I was very moved. I went, I'm representative of the Women Federation in Birmingham in the UK. And my name is Patricia. And uh, I've been doing a lot of work for peace. We're raising up um, a Women Peace Group for many years, and we went quite a few times to the Holy Land. And my question is, do you, did you meet the bereaved families for home? And do you, are you connected with them? Uh, because we had the opportunity to sponsor Ali and Tamara to come to Birmingham and to talk to many schools with children. And I, I really, I really believe what you say about connecting in heart when Sarah, you know, love you, even she didn't like Jewish people, but she loved you. And I felt that I had that experience when that Jewish lady, Tamara, she lost her, her, her son through the war. And she spoke to a group, 90% Muslim girls. And afterwards they were so moved and they all went and embraced her, you know. And uh, um, I, I, I just feel it's such an important work for healing. So I thank you so much. My, my question is, are you in contact with them or? Yes. Some some of them, some of them. I have yeah. a good friend, Ruby. Uh, I brought Ruby Damlin once to the um, uh, meeting in um, Geneva, I think. What where, where was yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah, Ali, yeah. Ali he, he, she she lost her son. Ali lost his Ali Abouad lost his um, brother, Stop. and and I have um, a friend, Israeli friend who lost her. Brother, I, I I met many of yeah. them. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ali it's came. Very, to yeah. very beautiful um, movement and very active. Also, we have a, a similar movement by the name of Combatants for Peace, which is also soldiers or um, freedom warriors, like they, they call themselves from, from Palestine mm -hmm. and uh, soldiers from the IDF that are joining together, making uh, activities for peace in Israel. Yeah, yeah, thank you. There so are much. there are good people in Israel, you know, especially yeah. in the way in hospitals, doctors doing a lot, and hospitals and as organizations doing a lot. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing work you are doing. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other question? Any other question? Let me see if there's anything on the chat. Any questions on the chat? No, just comments by our Japanese uh, friend from Israel that you are amazing. <laughs> mm. Yeah, Mrs. Albina Tanui, Day of Peace and Peace in Action. Um, yeah, we don't have much, much time left, but um, I think many, I, even if people don't express any questions, uh, especially on this day, we can, we, we really uh, come to think very seriously how we can finally bring peace. Everybody wants peace. At least, even those who fight the most, they want peace. They they do it for peace. They fight for peace. But how can we bring? I think. Oh, there is. Sorry, there is uh, Hyde Marie. Yes, Greece. thank you very much, Doctor Iris. It was very very good to hear, especially also your dream. What you have, you believe that it can work to work together and to build these friendships. I think it's very important that we never forget this dream. We all have it in our heart and we appreciate very much what you do and hopefully we can help all together to bring this uh, peaceful world. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so um, yeah, maybe there are people who have not uh, spoken yet. Oh yes, Brigitte Silito. Yes, thank you so much mm -hmm. for your precious testimony. Uh, you spoke more than once about trauma and uh, could you uh, give more uh, explanation on how can we cure a trauma that is so strong and what is your method? It is, um, it is, uh, you know, it is a long, it's a long and deep work to do. Um, with um, not only with mental professionals, but it's much. We need much more people than the mental professionals, especially in in the West Bank, especially 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 in Gaza, where the trauma, uh, traumatic and post traumatic uh, victims are a lot. So we try to think about um, um, training uh, teachers and people from. Uh, from school so and training the trainers like training teachers especially to to give um opportunity to children or parents to talk about uh their experience the traumatic experience and you make the briefing more and more so it was like training the trainers but the, training the the teacher in order to be uh, it was like pyramid of but it's 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 a trial, but it's very 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 complicated. Of course, 
But <laughs> we have to stop the occupation. That is what we have to do, but we cannot. And um, at least, in my opinion, at least meeting the traumatic um, uh, experience and also fighting for at least just partial justice. You know, we, we, we have many problems in West Bank and also, of course, in Gaza. Um, it's very very difficult because here if i have to to work as i'm psychologist i'm clinical psychologist so when i have to work with with a post traumatic person or even with a group sometimes with a group when we don't have enough resources it is simple because i'm very experienced and i'm professional but to 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 try to do something in in gaza for example with it is very very difficult so we Tried, you know, a little, but we we think that little is something. Mm -hmm. sure. Most important is the relationship, the encounter. Mm -hmm. we, we are thinking about the future, not about the just the present. Thank you, thank you very much. Perhaps it is more difficult because it is about emotions. Mm -hmm. It's not in the logic. If if it was just in logic, it would have been perhaps easier to change my thinking. I can change my thinking by understanding and whatever, but yes. my emotions, my heart, is much more difficult to change it. Don't you think so? Yes. And also that, you know, in Israel, there is this issue of tr the, the, the kind of um, collective trauma from Holocaust or pe places where people came from place, places that were um, having uh, bad relationships and bad things that have, they have been done to them, and, and especially the Holocaust. And there is kind of intergenerational trauma here and the feeling that uh people that we need yes, safe safety and that's why we need this um um occupation uh, occupied territory which is not true but this is the kind of emotional or psychological issue here in israel so there is a competition now between palestinians and and israelis about uh victimhood you see Still, it doesn't matter. We are doing wrong in the occupation, of course. It's not a solution. <sighs> yeah. Mm. yeah. Right. Oh, yes. Nada. Hello, Nada. Hello. And oh, hello. It's a long time, no see. Nada, 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 Nada. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I will send you my love. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. It's just, you know, I, sorry, I catch in the, I'm in like in a middle of a family, uh, not tragedy. I, I think my mother-in-law is uh, decided to go and we're letting her go. So it's a difficult decision. Oh. And so I think to the hospital, but I wanted just to, to be, to join and to be part of this. I was just thinking because I'm, uh, there's a foundation here near in Bristol um, uh, that, you know, they give free therapy to refugees and I'm doing a lot of interpretation with them. And I have, I have discovered how the different layers of trauma also are, you know, it's not only the, the mental side, but it's related a lot to the physical, physical you know, uh, illnesses and other things. And I was astonished among a little sample of, of mainly as women and men, they're all having fibromyalgia. So it's their body is also kind of reacting with autoimmune things and, uh, it, you know, the process. So it's, you, and I realized it's not only what they have been through as a collective trauma, historic or, or the war or anything else. It's just layers over layer, like you're peeling off and it goes to many other things. And uh, sometimes we feel helpless because their body's not responding anymore. So also you need all this 
medical infrastructure. So you need different professionals. That's all, it's not only the mental health. So there's always a dialogue between the, the doctors who are not understanding that they're, they're not seeing the, the patient as a, like they don't have a holistic approach. And uh, so they go from one specialist to the other, to the other. And as mental health specialists are telling them, which I'm not, you know, but I'm part of their therapy group because they trust me, you know, you have to gain the trust and to, to commit to be there with their therapy every week to follow them. So you have to build those bridges with, you know, the different counterparts from the other doctors who don't understand uh, the council, social worker, the courts, if they, you know, the asylum is being rejected, all of that. So I'm just saying it like, I'm just taking it, which is, you know, it's very complicated where you are geographically, but I'm trying to widen it, you know, and it's happening everywhere. I was really struck by how, how unwell they were, uh, you know, yeah. wanted to add this uh, testimony. And to tell you thank you, and I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah. I think there was, before Handan, there was uh, uh, Amanda who wanted to say something. Hello. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I brought it down. I just, mostly I just felt really moved. I'm living in the West Coast of Ireland myself, so it's a very different reality. And just listening to your, you know, your day-to-day -day reality, or I can feel the pain, the just the tragedy. You know, there's 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 victims everywhere on both sides. You know, no one's no one's winning from this, even though we're trying to um communicate or or you know bring a pre peaceful solution when there's war involved and loss. So I just feel just so grateful to hear your personal testimonies and it's just a reminder. And I think when you said, you know, even if it's just one or two people who can connect together and then from there, once there's two of you, then there can be more, there can be three, there can be four. And I just feel really struck and moved myself that, you know, this is something that maybe we don't have enough communication, which is another thing you mentioned, which is key, that maybe we don't communicate enough and we don't realize, you know, really what's happening in certain parts of the world and that 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 reality and also we could really be supporting one another much more even just as that point of connecting together and having that you know communication from a different perspective and from a different place so I just want to say thank you so much for your work and you know um yeah I'll be thinking of you and sending you um some prayers and support. And of course, it's, you know, very difficult, I'm sure, day to day. But I really appreciate you. So that's it. Thank you. Very much. Thank mm. you. Lovely. Yeah, indeed. Ireland is another yet another conflictual place, right? <laughs> yes, yes, it is. But we're, we're in a slightly different situation. <laughs> But nevertheless, yes. it's very deep. There's a lot of collective trauma. There's a lot of layers of stuff that we have to start dealing with. But I think, again, you know, it goes back to um, communication and step by step and coming together. And then, you know, as you say, then from there, things can grow and we can start dealing with these things collectively. And it starts, of course, with the individual. So. Yeah, well, there's no escape. We all have, you know, we have something that we're dealing with, you know, in different levels of severity. But anyway, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Yeah. Handan has something to say. If you unmute yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening from Turkey. Uh, really so happy to each one of you, see to each one of you the precious women around the world. Uh, please remember just now we are living really, really special age, uh, women's age. We can, uh, we can forgive, you know, we can forgive everything past, what happened, everything happened, we know everywhere. We can forgive and we can really send love and light everywhere. And we can do this, you know. Um, 
we are women, please remember, we are mothers. And we are so strong than when, what we are thinking. Thank you so much. I love you. See you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Hmm. Yes. We are a bit over time, I think, but uh, I don't think anyone wants to go, right? <laughs> There's still so much to uh, to say, to share. There are many people who did not say anything, and I'm sure uh, they would probably want to um, open their uh, screen, their camera, so we can see who they are. <laughs> See faces. Uh, maybe take a maybe take a picture. So we will take a picture. Yes, I I count very much on Miti to do all these kind of <laughs> technical things because we we now have uh, um, two screens. At first there were very few people, and now we are uh, we have been on um, more than thirty actually. So just for a picture, we can, if we don't mind opening our screen. Yes, yes, please do. Okay. Is uh, Miti going to take the picture? <laughs> Yes, actually, I am taking the photo. So um, let's put our all bright smiles on. And then out of three, I'll do it. One, two, three. Oh, there was one missing here. Okay. If everyone can open their cameras, that will be really, really nice. Just for a few seconds. So one. Yeah, we're nearly there. Come on. <laughs> happening. It's happening. Well, happening is almost there. Okay, one, two, three big smiles. One more because there's another page. So, okay, uh, okay, one, two, three. Good, thank you, thank you, thank very, you very much. much. Yeah, thank you so much. It was an amazing, uh, amazing her story, very important. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Miki has something to say before we start we close. Yes, actually I do have something to say. I just want to say, you know, it just takes a one courageous woman to make a, a difference in the lives of many. And uh, to be courageous, you have to step out of yourself and put yourself in the front line. And of course, it is, there's a lot of challenges, but also there are many openings, you know, and possibilities. And uh, we need one person to be the catalyst to make that change. And I think uh, through this, uh, her story, we can find that uh, behind uh, this, you know, the, the, this story, there's uh, this tremendous amount of challenges and also using the skills and uh, capacity of women, you know, feminine leadership is really deeply embedded. And especially as mothers, you know, mothers are the key actually to really bring peace because we want to see peace in the world for not just for our own children, but we want to see peace for all children and to have a good future. So thank you so much uh, to Zoe and uh, Dr. Katz. It's been an amazing uh, story. Yeah. Thank you, Zoe. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank Mickey. You. And, uh, thank and you. More than anything, thank you very much, Dr. Iris. Dotan Katz, and really we wish you a great success. Sincerely, we wish that you can see the fruit of your effort. This is the most important, and we want always to support you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you next month. See you next month. Bye. Bye-bye.